already like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop, and I'll be listening to Big Finish, and I have to tell you, I think 2022 has probably been one of the best years for Big Finish for minimally five years, maybe even seven. It's been a really, really strong year. Uh, I've been listening to, uh, uh, not Doctor Who for once, I've been, been listening to, uh, where is that put up? Doink, over here. Uh, Blake Seven, the world's of Blake Seven, heroes and villains. So this is one of their uh, uh, their ongoing range of working out what to do. Uh, uh, now Paul Darrow uh, <laughs> and pretty much everybody else is dead. I think Paul Darrow dying, I think, was the thing that really, really broke it. They said, we can't, we, we can't recast Paul Darrow. Although, you know what? If you ever were going to uh, make a new uh, Blake Seven, I always thought, what's his name? Um, oh, uh, guy played Hannibal Lecter in their TV show. And uh, the villain in uh, um, uh, Casino Royale. Uh, I mean, the, the, the recent one, not the 1960s version. Uh, uh, what's he called again? Uh, uh, I thought he would be, be a good name. But generally speaking, you're yeah, not going to replace Paul Darrow. Uh, uh, yeah, they didn't really have this problem when Gareth Thomas died. Uh, you know, but because uh, uh, Gareth Thomas sounded like Gareth Thomas' grandfather when they did the Blake 7 audios. So it was actually bit of a relief for it. I mean listen he should I wished him a long life don't get me wrong uh, 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 but you know they are uh, Jacqueline Pierce as well there's really not much you can you, you can't really continue without these major major roles so they've they've trying different things to continue the range and like to see the universe and take a look at uh, uh, you know 90 degrees to the left or the right and do stuff more stuff in that universe uh, I, I it's been somewhat successful in places I think this one, it, you can kind of feel them running out of uh, uh, um, running out the wedge. You know, they, they this one is it feels like they're really trying to squeeze it out. I'm not sure how many more they got. This was actually quite an enjoyable set. I mean, if you like Blake Seven, uh, 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 this one's probably for you. There is a bit much of uh, putting together uh, 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 Jenna and Callie because this is a thing in entertainment in general. That women are uh, uh, an oppressed subclass and they need uh, 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 to be better, better represented. And in all fairness, yeah, listen, I understand uh, uh, Sally uh, Nivet uh, um, thought she was going to play a kick-ass uh, uh, yeah, space pirate, and instead she played a bit of a blonde bimbo. I hate to tell you, Sally, you look freaking gorgeous, right? You you were there as eye candy. And I'm sorry that you were there as eye candy, but you were. Uh, 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 what's the word? Remarkably good eye candy, right? I understand you're happier now. You're getting more for your character to do, but it just seems a little bit modern, uh, 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 modern day for me. Having said that, everything's very in character. I, I uh, uh, generally speaking, I like this set. I do like this set. I will give this. I'm a bit, bit of a spoiler for the review. I'm going to give this one a seven. Uh, yes, yeah, a seven, seven out of ten. Fine. Before you get in the review, like, share, subscribe, comment. Uh, uh, that'll be all. Fan Dabby, Double Dozy, sign up my Substack. Sign up my paid Substack. Cause I, I, I've been putting, I put out some Blake Seven strips on there occasionally. Uh, uh, maybe I'll do, do, do that again soon. Uh, 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 like, share, subscribe, comment. Yeah, all those things are really, really good. Thank you very much. YouTube is throttling my channel a little bit right now. Uh, what can I tell you? What can I tell you? They, they can only handle so much awesomeness. That is the rabbi from uh, rabbi from another planet, and they want to protect the world. Uh, uh, but there, you know, there you go. So it's funny actually that Dorian is like the main person on this cover. Um, uh, he, I mean, he's not. He's in. He's in one big story. He's, he's made. He's made. But other than that. It's, it seems that like, Jenna and Callie should be the main thing on the cover. Uh, we get, yeah, you can see a little Liberator in the background. This is set in season uh, season B. I, if they do more of these, I hope they do a, a, a couple of uh, Villa and Tarrant ones from season C. Uh, especially as there's like a real real tension they built up with that in the audios, which, we're, we're, uh, which I liked and I thought was worth uh, 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 investigating. So, you know, uh, uh, yeah, I think this is uh, one of the better ones. Certainly better than Avalon. Oh, man, the Avalon box sets. The problem with the Avalon box set was Avalon, the character of Avalon. You know, Avalon's sort of a blank slate you could have done anything with. And so I was like, oh, yeah, let's do something interesting with her, which is actually they do with, uh, uh, what's it again, uh, uh, Shrinker? Is that the, 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 the name of the 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 final villain in 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 the last one they really do that well with this set they don't do it at all with her right she's just boring going in boring staying there and though those sets are just made good by you know, Stephen Grief or whatever else they put in or whatever the guest does she's a really boring character uh, uh, Babe in the Bush was awful that was that was a really poorly written set. Um, 
uh, basically made to make Babin look like a bit of a, blumber, a blundering idiot. Uh, just did. I was so looking forward to that as well. Clone Masters, I really enjoyed. I thought that was good. And there was one more. Uh, Terra Nostra also uh, uh, was okay. <coughs> so this one I think is around just not as good as the Clone Masters, but around Terra Nostra level. Fine. So let's uh, 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 look into what this this Heroes and Villains set is. Well, it's really. Villains, not 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 here. I mean, the heroes are the heroes. Uh, you know, uh, uh, um, Callie and uh, Jenna. Yeah, so, so let's re read the burb, right? The burb. Uh, unscrupulous bounty hunters, cunning rogue traitor, sadistic interrogator. Their adversary is to be avoided, but now they have found Jenna, Stannis, and Callie. <coughs> the Armageddon, uh, the the Armaguns deceive their enemies and their allies alike. Dorian's glamour disguises his de his danger, and there's nothing hiding Shrinker's brutal intentions. These villains have no mercy, and they will encounter uh, encounter our heroes. Well, two of them anyway. Uh, um, so the. I, I like Blake Seven. I've seen every episode of Blake Seven. I own every episode of Blake Seven. Okay, I would if they if they really release it with new special effects, which I really would love them to do. I would buy that as well, right? I like Blake Seven. I've seen them all. I'm not like a maven, right? I don't know it off the top of my head. So the the Amagans, I really didn't remember at all, right? At all. I assume that it's uh, uh, every, everything is very very accurate to what um, and gels with what we saw on screen. Uh, uh, or at least doesn't contradict what we saw on screen. Look, it's uh, Trevor uh, 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 Baxendale wrote it. He is always, always reliable. I would give this. Uh, uh, I'll give this story out of ten. It's not the best story. The best story on this disc. Uh, I would give it like a set six and a half to seven. Now, the reason it's getting a lower one is because I, I listened to it about a week ago, and when I came to this review, I couldn't remember a damn thing about it, right? I was like, what? what was this one about again? And there are a lot of good bits in it, but I really couldn't remember enough about it, so that it wasn't that uh, 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 that memorable, which is a bit of a surprise for uh, uh, Trevor Baxter. Again, <coughs> somebody who really totally understands the DNA of Blake Seven. <coughs> so the, the Amagon Queen... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, slave traders, bounty hunters, smugglers, slave traders, bounty hunters. Jenna Stannis uh, knows from personal experience that she uh, you just can't trust the, the Amagons. So why has she delivered herself into the hands of the infamous Amagon Queen? And can Callie help her uh, uh, escape the Federation commander and his uh, ruthless uh, mutoid uh, and his ruthless mutoid track them down? Can it, well, can it escape before a Federation commander and his ruthless mut mutoid track them down? Track them all down. Um, so, opens up quite quite nicely with it, with a, uh, a slave market and Jenna's being sold in a slave market. Again, I, I, if Jenna was being sold in a slave market, I think I might 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 have put put a bid or two in there. Uh, uh, that's just me for you. But uh, uh, it was always a cunning plan so she can meet the Amagon Queen <coughs> and get and get embroiled within the story. The standout of this story, though, is the is a new take on, on, on a mutoid. There's a mutoid uh, with a um, feckless, ineffectual, idiot federation commander. And the mutoid does everything, right? The mutoid is just so together uh, 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 as, as, as such a great, as, as clever and, and great planner. <coughs> kind of like uh, Kato was with the Green Hornet, right? You know, you always got the feeling that Kato didn't really need the Green Hornet. So, so yeah, so, same way here. Uh, um, then the, the, you, it, the Cali story is a, a little bit generic, right? A gen oh, poor freedom fighter's going to help. Uh, uh. So I think my main problem with this story is it doesn't, it, as far as I remember, right? It's been a week since I listened to it and it wasn't memorable. I can't remember how it connected with the other two, right? Uh, uh, which is a shame. If they connect them all together, it would have made it stronger. They generally speaking do make it stronger if they do that. Um, so I'm going to give this one a seven. It's not not Baxendale's greatest, right? It's not he's always reliable, not his greatest. So next story is a deal with Dorian by by Mark, Mark B. Uh, uh, Oliver. And again, I had no memory of the uh, Amagons as well. Now I remember Dorian, right? I remember Dorian. I remember him like laughing at the Federation, not the, the Liberator crew, as. What was it? It looked like the magma beast was coming to get them, and that's really. I just remember him having a good pr uh, 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 presentation, being kind of suave, uh, 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 interesting. So again, not a huge maven. Now, uh, 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 Shrinker, I, I know that episode well. I've seen that. I saw that recently, and I freaking love that episode. So, 
Uh, Jenny and Callan need supplies to repair the damaged Liberator. So this is the season B. When did it get damaged? Again, I, I don't know. I don't know. Don't really care. I just, it does. Uh, and tre Treacherous Dealer Dorian is the only one that can help. But he has dangerous plans of his own with a remote Federation uh, research station. Will Callie, uh, Callie and Jenna realize the danger they're in before they fall under Dorian's influence? Uh, uh, look, spoiler alert. Yes, obviously they do. Great actor playing Dorian. Uh, um, who was the cast? Let's have a look. Dorian was Matthew Gravel, who I assume isn't the guy who played him on TV. Uh, um, really, really nailed the character, right? The uh, Again, the, sm the sm smoothness and suaveness. Uh, 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 of the character, they, they, you, we see a lot about them. Uh, um, the Federation trying to build their own teleport thing, uh, and, and it ties into why Dorian was somewhat uh, uh, obsessed with uh, teleportation as when when we saw him, he'd been trying to build his own one, uh, uh, and how he got the resources to do that. All that is kind of like an interesting backstory, I, solid performances, solid script. Uh, 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 I quite like, yeah, I quite like this one. I quite like this one. I'm going to give this one, yes, uh, I'll give this one a 7 out of 10. Again, nothing stellar. Favourite one, though, because I really love the characters. Andrew Smith, uh, everybody, everybody talks to uh, Shrinker. Captured and alone, Jenna is defenceless and, the, in, and in the Federation clutches. Callie is desperate to find her friends, and they, uh, and they are both far, uh, far from liberated. So this is basically a direct sequel to uh, the second story. And I, again, I just wish they could have tied that first story in somehow. Uh, uh, so she, uh, 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 and they're both far from Liberator. In a hostile Federation battleground, Jenna discovers there is, uh, there can be no escape from a cruel interrogator, the notorious Shrinker, right? So what I really love about this one is you get to see the origins of Shrinker. It starts off with the torture scene. Uh, and then uh, uh, everything gets turned on its head as who you, you the person you think is a torturer is really being tortured and vice versa. Very clever, very clever. And throughout the script, it builds up a, a background to the character Shrinker, which makes you understand how he is. They, they, uh, yeah, how he came to be who he is. There's a, uh, uh, his little torture kit, which has a Velcro uh, uh, opening. It, they make it so really, really ominous as you hear the the, the, the tearing of the Velcro to open uh, to open up his torturous tools. Uh, but there's a lot of really good concepts in here. There's uh, uh, this uh, uh, Federation prison planet where they do, amazing enough, the Federation doing very, very uh, bad things. They're trying to make very, very bad things. Where uh, uh, And there's uh, uh, a lot more of the, uh, what's it called again? The uh, non-liberator non resistance attacking the Federation. That, that actually comes over very well. Uh, and the planet they develop, they they they, they develop this uh, the planet that they are stranded on, uh, uh, and I don't I really don't don't want to spoil it, right? Because it's it's a really good little story. It does again tie into the Shrinker episode quite nicely when we see it see it on TV. Uh, uh, yeah, so for me this was if you like Blake Seven, this was a fun little sidestep. It just it's wearing a bit thin at this point. I don't know the longevity of this range. I've always said, and I, this is the thing they said they don't want to do, right? They do not want to do. But I would say do a not just another series based on the same premise. Like I said, a hundred years later, uh, uh, a bunch of prisoners find the Liberator. They board it, and then inside there's stasis chambers with who, who's ever still alive, like Stephen Grief, uh, 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 Taron, you know, Nicholas Pacey. Uh, 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 but, you know, <laughs> how are they going to be alive for? Although, I guess if they die, they could kill them off in continuity then. So, again, set a hundred years later. And then basically just keep doing the same thing. I mean, and that way you've got some longevity, longevity built into it. And you can make, you can chart, you can chart your own course, right? You can, Big Finish can chart a new course without worrying about interrupting any any other continuity. Which they're very good at doing. I mean, I'm telling you that I love those uh, those seasons they did in season C, right? The uh, uh, restoration uh, uh, and crossfire. They, they were great. They, they, I think they're some of the best stuff they've, they've done. Uh, um, but uh, 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 yeah, it just feels like th this is not a sustainable path to the future. Although I'm on board for whatever the next thing they want to do. I think there's a lot to explore in, 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 in the Blake 7 world. Uh, uh, you know, they they brought Tarrant back from the dead as well. <laughs> so they could do that. They could do something with Baben. Just don't make him into a idiot pussy again. I hated that. I really, really hated that. Uh, 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 but, yeah, there's a, uh, you know, a lot they can, can explore. It just fills, again, 
I don't see the longevity of this range moving forward with this way. Uh, uh, it's been a nice stopgap method for, for a couple of years. Who knows Who knows how it's going to last? But as I said, this one is a bit of a recommend. My name's Fina Beckett, the rabbi from another planet. Please like, share, and subscribe, and ring that little bell. Ring the little bell so you're notified when new videos drop. Yeah!